This is for Randy Caruso. I love you, man. And I'm still writing. And I hope that you're still writing, bro. And um let's try to let's try to let's try to put some stuff together, Doc. This one's for you, Doc. This one is called an SOS with no avail of escaping. I miss you, little bro. I'll see you this summer, though. I hate this town. That's all I'll say. But I'll make it out. Everything's broken again Into a million pieces Everything's broken Everything's broken, my friend Into a million pieces Cross my heart In hope to die I died a million times before so what's another time? Ballads from your windows Content me with your smile Stop. My pen is your lullaby My pen is your lullaby Down. That's all I say. I'll make it out. Cause I'm leaving today. Everything's broken. Everything's broken again. Into a million pieces. So useless when everything's broken again into a million fuck. Go, be good. Fire Stop. in the hole. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Randy Baby Caruso. You did this, man. I'm back. I'm the greatest part two! I'm the greatest to ever do this shit, man! I am the hood, urban, emo, rock king, baby! In the Lake Juice world. Listen, man, it's your motherfucking captain, Jimmy Moore. I'm here with the only admiral in the motherfucking game, G Money. Yo. And y'all know what we here to do? We about to put that love on the motherfucking game. And y'all know who we got? Sometimes you gotta talk to the creator. We got Oslo! Just a couple questions. Go ahead, Oz! Tell him! Yo, I wanna know where crisis when I'm in the crisis and why I lean on other devices. I'm sick of living wicked one day, next minute I'm righteous. Just tell me what the meaning of life is. You made me with a purpose, why work? Can I just do that? How I take a step forward just to take two back? What's the lesson? I'm trying to learn, but I'm sick of guessing. If I'm human, why you asking for perfection? You said before the world you chose me. I don't feel so lucky. If I'm so wonderfully made, why I feel so ugly? How is sin so wicked when it feels so lovely? Guess my question is, do you still love me? How you see us in this chaos and got the power to change it and won't? I would do it if I could, but I can't because I don't. Then he told me, keep faith. The answer is hope. Keep walking, I'm enhancing your growth. You so close to begin to know. Let's go. I know y'all want to know, and I'm going to tell you, but what is it that you want to know? I'm not going to be there. I will always be there, baby, front and center, on the fucking forefront, man, in my battle 
station. It's me, the motherfucking general, the motherfucking captain, Jimmy Moore. Yeah. And I'm here with the only motherfucking admiral in the game. G motherfucking money. What's up, baby? What's up, man? We have to assign a rank to our to the newest member of our team here. We got um adorable made her appearance. I, th I think she, I think there's a certain volume that she she deals I, with, and once you reach that, that she that, tried to put a stop to yes. it. Great job, man. Way to push. That was one take we did that. That you fucking I, fought through I, that. I fought through it because she was biting the fuck out of me. <laughs> and she was like, "Stop! You're too loud. Your neighbors." Your neighbors, stop. My baby, stop. And this is the neighbor's cat. It's so crazy. Oh, They're out here regulating. <laughs> Adorable, you better stop. <laughs> I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm such a fucking animal lover that <laughs> I can't help but to love them. Yeah. But hold on, let's not get distracted. I just hit these niggas with another motherfucking billion streamer, dog. An SOS with no avail of escaping is the name of that song, y'all. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I, I yo, dog. I write that music. For those old emo white boys that's, that's rebelling and heartbroken at the same time, man, in high school. Dog, like, yeah, I'm, I'm their fucking voice, bro. I'm supposed to be out there, dog, on tour with motherfucking Led Zeppelin. A motherfucking, um, 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 Jerry Garcia was supposed to introduce me to motherfucking mushrooms and shit like that, dog. I was supposed to be out there, dog. I write dope music. Let me tell you something, man. This is kid that I met on Warp Tour, but there was a a godfather of emo screamo rock music that told me one day when we was on at their sound check. He heard me just, uh, I think it was Avenged Sevenfold um, doing a sound check, and we were watching. And he heard me, like, doing a screamo, like, little thing to when they were doing their little sound check. And he was like, yo, man, you got a great fucking scream voice right there. And I was like, word? Like, when he said that, I was just fucking around. I was yeah. just playing around. You know how I be doing it. Like, it's, all, it's, it's all fucking, uh, it's a circus for me. I like to fucking perform, you know? Like, let's let's have fun. Um, but when he said that, I kind of took that shit serious. And that's my dude, Eddie Reyes, from Taking Back Sunday, man, that introduced me to John Oaks um, and, and Story of the Year. Um, uh, fucking story of the year, one of the greatest bands out of Seattle ever. Um, but when he said that shit, I kind of like, yo, wait a minute. We was at Skate and Surf when that shit happened. And um, I, I'm going to say something here, man. I got on this tour called Warp Tour. And I always kind of figured that I wanted to do music and shit like that. You know what I mean? Because I thought that, I, you know, I, I could do it. I, I like... Like, check this shit out. I know you niggas think I'm bugging, bro. I know y'all think I'm bugging. But I'm telling you, I be writing hit songs, man. I'm about to give y'all niggas a snippet of some shit that's just so, 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 so fucking fire. I just wrote this shit earlier today, dog. I just wrote this shit earlier today, dog. And this, I, I don't even have a name for this shit yet. But you niggas think I'm playing? Listen to this shit. Randy. Randy Caruso. I'm back. I'm ready, dog. I'm ready. There's nothing left to say. Never again, never again, never again. 
mind to my room Still got today Just stop. I'm one, I'm the greatest. I make hit songs. That snippet right there. Billion. Billion streams. And do you niggas understand, man? Like, yo, bro. I, yo, Randy Caruso, he inspires me to write. I know, I, I, I know I ain't got the dope, like my voice saying, nah, nah, I ain't got no trained voice, nigga, but this voice is passionate. I took a page out of Kurt Cobain's book. Yeah, Zombie Kurt, niggas. Y'all remember Zombie Kurt? He right here still. I took, a, I took a page out of Kurt Cobain, bro. And my voice is decent. It's not the, it's not, it's not the best, but it's decent. Randy Caruso and I, he was the leader of the band. He was the lead guitarist, you know? And and and, 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 and Timmy was the drummer. Fucking uh, Jay was the bassist. I was the vocal songwriter. And um, we wrote some joints, man. We wrote some fucking joints. The name of our band was called Unfaithfully Yours. Mm -hmm. Yo, dog. All my shit was about heartbreak. I all my shit was about bitches cheating on me, M me, me fucking being with bitches that I knew was lying. All, I, all kind of, hey, yo, boy, you know what it's like to live a lot. Just to <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. I'm one of the greatest, man. Randy Caruso, man. Wrote some of these fucking dope ass motherfucking joints, man. This first song that we're gonna, I'm gonna just play a little snippet of this shit. Uh, track number one, this shit is called Things a Factory in Long Island Can Do. Shout out to Nubian Heritage, Long Island. Want you to notice that everything's fine. Hope that you feel it alone when you lie at night in your bed. Nothing is said. He knows that he's broken. He's had his last chance. Not that she says, we'll make this all right. He looks at him quietly over the night. Whispers of fear, so long and it's fair. He knows that it's over. She just doesn't care. Take this time to take my Atreus. Shout out to my nigga Brandon, my nigga Mark. 
You know what I mean? Martinez. I was supposed to be out there, man, with motherfucking funeral for a friend. Well, I ain't gonna lie, funeral for a friend used to let me rock with them and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I, I, I was rocking out with, the, with funeral. I, I'm telling you, I'm a different kind of hood nigga, dog. I'm not a regular hood nigga. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm a hood nigga abroad. <laughs> I'm a hood nigga abroad, B. You heard what I said? I'm a hood nigga abroad. That's why I'm able to adapt and chameleon into these envir- these different environments, bro. But this is an environment that I engulfed myself into. I'm not playing with it. I'm not fucking pretending just to play around. Nah, man. I'm, I'm a, Nah, fuck that, man. I'm great. I'm great. This song right here is called A Conversation We Should Have Had Face to Face. Oh, 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 man. This, hey, hey, you know what? Nah, don't even play a conversation we should have had face to face. Play a conversation, um, things we should have said when we had the chance to. That's um, play track number two. And we're going to have to let G-Money, you know, we're going to have to let breathe a little bit. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm great, y'all. Things we should have said when we had the chance to, dog. I didn't forget you, John Basil. Do you notice 
up playing the drums where there's no even no drums being played, nigga. That's how fucking hard that fucking song rocks right there, man. Oh my god, yo. Let me tell you a story about that song. Let me tell you a fucking story about that song. Um now, um that was written by John Basil. That the that the guitar, right? And John couldn't make it. His his um baby moms needed him to stay. So he, you know, he had to chill, he had to fall back. And we met this crazy guy that was in a, a drummer in a band named Michael Seahawk, all right, on Warp Tour. And he was telling people that he'd do demos and shit like that. And he said that each song is $100. I was like, you know what? When we get off tour, we go come and fuck with you, me and my band. And what's crazy is Michael Seahawk, he used to wear a Seahawk hat from the like the band C, uh, uh, the, the football team, the Seahawks. And what's extra crazy is he had a nose like a Seahawk. <laughs> But he did our fucking um he did our fucking demo, um so Randy, once again saved the fucking day because this th that that song right there man that was like ah oh, that was like our fucking mm, you know what I mean uh Randy knew how to play he played it and um you know Timmy brought those fucking drums in and um that song right there is when i knew like i'm all in man at the at the at the studio when when i was um all those screens and you know my fucking oh my god it didn't even make a difference i i was all in that song but it was this next song right here this is written by randy caruso um top to bottom um when I heard this song right here, I was just like, yo, this kid taps into to the 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 raw emotion, you know, his uh each string that he's strung that's strung by him, he really he finds that emotion to bring it up out of you. Really special kid, man. Really special young man. This 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 brother right here, Doc. Um Everything We Should Have Said When We Had the Chance is the name of the song, man. Whew. Randy Caruso. Number three. <laughs>
Right there was a Guns N' Roses patience reference. You know, I, I'm i big Guns N' Roses fan, so that, that was my moment to give back to Axel uh, my inspiration through. All right, man. Yo, Randy, I need you to know that you are fucking great, bro. I need you to know that you're great, and I need you to know that I have a little baby platform here that niggas fuck with me with. And, dude, I wanted to share it with you. Uh, it was great talking with you, and I hear it in your soul, dog. You need to be reminded that you are fucking great. Randy Caruso, bro, I'm going to see you this motherfucking summer, dog. Lord willing, inshallah, you know, and I'm going to say this. Man, your battle station till then, soldier. You heard me, corporal? You man your fucking battle station, dog. You are fucking great. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, with the overtime that we put in, y'all know what it do. It's G Money Talk! All you do is talk about money. That's all you do. Well, bitch, I need it! Six, too many lines from the 603 G Money, what you got for me? Come on, come on, G Money, what you got for me? We got Jimmy over there in the Buffalo plaid, plaid. And in the Buffalo stance. Come on, G Money, what you got for me? It's the 30 minute mark. Come on, yeah, come on, yeah. Shout out to Josh as always for that. You know, when, when I find something that fits, you know, I'll throw a little intro in for, for, for my segment as well. That's <laughs> everybody feels that. No, no matter how much you make, everybody needs more. Um, and shout out to you guys for rocking with us again. Welcome to G Money Talk. Welcome to Fire in the Holt. Uh, <laughs> if you're not subscribed to the YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there. If that's where you listen to the show, you get the clips of the show, the video version of the show. If you want the video version of the show a week early, you know you can get it at patreon.com slash fire in the hole where you get all the exclusive content, music saves lives, Jimmy reacts, all that fun, wild shit that we'd be doing over there. Um, Randy but- Caruso is great. I'm sorry. <laughs> One of the greats. We got we got a lot of greats on this show. Um, speaking of greats, here we got a we got a great grandpa here with this speech. And you know, life life is really about bit building a legacy. That's that's one part of it. And another part is recognizing that legacy that you have. And that's what this guy does here. He's at a he's at his grandson's wedding party. He gets up and gives a little speech. And who can't get behind this guy right here? Hey. All of this happened because I got laid. Yeah! 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 I know what that's like, man. (laughs) I know when you get some good anal, some good pussy, some good neck. I know what it's like, man, after that, man. And and she's still riding with you. Ow. Ain't no nigga. Listen to me, man. I'm going to tell you this, dog. You want to (laughs) splurge. You want to splurge, dog. You want the world to know you are happy. You want to scream. You you want to scream at like Ron Burgundy at the top of a mountain. You know, sliding down the most glorious <laughs> rainbow. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I feel Gramps. I'm not mad at him. Well, with that, you know, with that, that whole responsibility of building a legacy comes with kids. Kids are bad, Jim. I don't know if you know that, especially these days. Nigga, Kids don't give a fuck. 
They don't. And Nigga. there's people yeah. out here in the community. It's part of I've I've heard it part of your code that anyone can get it. Mm-hmm. And you got you can't let these kids walk around because nowadays they'll they'll say anything. There's no respect at all. And this guy's out here living by that code where he's not gonna let some punk kid talk to him any way he wants. I don't I, no matter how old he is. Mm-hmm. Little niggas talking shit. Little niggas in the hood talking shit. Yeah, yeah, little niggas in the hood talking shit. You see what Uncle Pete live? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, we're in trouble. That's that. That's the next general. <sighs> oh, shit. And also, there's, there's bad kids, and then there's kids that you just got to let They'll figure it out, but you got to let them learn lessons along the way, because otherwise, they you know, they they just got to figure some stuff out on their own. Like this kid here with the uh, going in for some pizza. I still haven't learned this lesson actually, by the way. So maybe you don't learn. Oh, what's up? <coughs> You're gonna take penitentiary chances, huh? You're gonna just risk second degree burn. <laughs> Trying to get to it. I'm not that. <laughs> Why did you, know? you just put yourself through that? Right Buddha, back at you it. ain't got yeah, to live yeah, like yeah, that, okay? Yeah, yeah, just blow it. Yeah, she doesn't understand. And wait. You trying to get to it. You see him blowing on yes. it. <laughs> Sean almost lost his life. Yeah. <laughs> he got a juicy bottle too. <laughs> He's a Flintstone kid. I don't know if you ever, I don't know if I ever told this story on the podcast when uh, motherfucking, uh, uh, I was threatened at a fucking gambling after hour spot by a nigga named Panama that stole this lady's jewelry out of her pocket. You know, out her, out her coat pocket. Yeah. The coats was hanged up. This nigga went through niggas coats. And I thought they sent him. I, I was just brand new. And I did it innocently. I didn't just be like, I saw the nigga do it. I was like, yo, yo, he did it. How it went down was I saw, you know, they they, 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 got, they get in the grease and stuff like that. And the lady's jewelry that was um stolen, she was playing cards. Uh-huh. And she was also boss shot calling like telling panama go to the store get uh, paper plates and get some paper towels and stuff you yeah, know oh, Pan- yeah, yeah. he doing he so i didn't think nothing of it um so i saw panama go in her jacket and put something in his pocket and went right over to where the fish and shit was being and the grease was bubbling, and the fish, you know, when he seasoned the fish up and stuff in there, um, he started putting fish in there. So people started to smell the fish cooking. It's after hours. Niggas is hungry. So people started dispersing from the table to go see what's up with the fish sandwiches. The lady went to her jacket and was like, Where's my bag with my jewelry in it? I was like, oh, Panama's holding it for you. He he got it. <laughs> and she said, what the fuck you mean, Panama holding it for me? For me, he he got it. And I was like, yeah. And Panama was like, yeah, I, I, I got it over here. I got it over here. And she was like, why the fuck are you going inside my pocket, Panama? And, and not telling me, I uh-uh. The nigga tried to steal it, but he tried to put it on other people, and I put it in my pocket so nobody would take it. (laughs) (laughs) So after that argument, that lasted for like a strong 15 minutes. Uh, The nigga was putting fish in the grease, and his way of threatening me was taking the fish out the grease <laughs> with his bare fucking heads and eating the shit fresh out the he would di- he would go like this <laughs> and make sure that I see him and he would go <laughs> and then look at directly at me while he do no fair <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I was a little nervous. I was with my nigga Kev. I was with my nigga Big Kev. I was like, yo, you watching this nigga, son? Because I don't want to have to. And yo, do not let me call my guys. 
my age demographic, these are all older niggas, but this nigga was a loose cannon. This nigga had on a motherfucking leather bomber, not a leather jacket, a leather bomber in the summer at night. It's like fucking, it's like 90 something degrees. Why you got a leather bomber on, bro? He reminded me of Larry Davis from the Bronx. <laughs> if you niggas don't know who Larry Davis is, I don't want to take up too much more of G Money time. Google him. Google. Google him. Oh shit. So um next up we have we have this guy here. And a lot of things, you know, when you work a in your job, no matter what your job is, if you do something every day, you, you just naturally pick up a skill for it. You know, you're just going to be better at it than most people that you do every day. And something that you do might be just amazing to someone else. But you're like, oh, you know, listen, that, this is what I do. You, you think you think nothing of it. This guy here is, is hyping up this uh, this checkout guy at uh, at some some supermarket, but just really gassing this guy up. Check it out. Mike, I'll give you the over under at a. Uh... 12 seconds. 12 seconds. Let it rip. Let it rip, Michael. Let it rip. Let it rip. Let it rip. Bang it home, Michael. Bang it home, Michael. Bang it home, Michael. Get it get it home, Michael. Smash it home, Michael. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Oh, that's a bad man. Oh, that's oh, yeah. a bad wow. man. Wow. You're an assassin, Michael. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Can can you do me a favor though? Can we give this guy a gun salute, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Whoever he is, can we give him a gun salute? For recognizing that skill. Can you imagine having a motherfucker like him come to your job every day just to pump you up? Just to fucking pump you? This guy is amazing. His energy is necessary for the world. I was just about to say, he bought, I think he bought all energy drinks and the K-cups of coffee. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what, okay, it makes sense now. It makes a whole bunch. He's like, yo, this guy is on the same time as I am. Mike, Michael's probably just on cocaine. <laughs> yeah, he's on energy and, 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 and caffeine. Mike's just on cocaine. This is a normal cocaine day for Mike. He's a fucking cocaine cowboy. <laughs> I ain't mad at him. Yeah, man. You know what? Fuck that. Give one to Mike, too, man. Give one to Mike. Fuck that. Yeah. Fire in the hole! Word. <laughs> Word. Word, bro. I ain't, I ain't mad at him. Oh, shit. What else do we have here? In case y'all worry, like, oh, it's getting late. Uh, uh, uh. We go throw in a little extra... 16 bars from the non-believers, man. You know, we still got a lot of shit to talk about. We skipped it. We, we got caught up in snowstorm and all that, but we go kick it with y'all tonight. Yeah, this episode, we go kick it with y'all. We got uh, we got some more. I don't even want to call this kid a kid a bad kid, but he's um his parent definitely knows how to handle him here, where she's uh doesn't seem like he can handle himself in school. So she's letting him get all that. All that energy out before she before she drops them off for a day because I guess she's sick of calls from the teacher. Get it out because don't do it no more today in school. That's hilarious. <laughs> Get it out. Because I don't want to do it. Oh my what god! What an obnoxious noise. I wonder if he played the game where who could make a noise and not get caught by the teacher. That's an awesome, oh, that's an awesome noise. That's a great noise. <laughs> um, next up, we got. Let's you know we we like to close it out uh, with an animal video here, and due to our new addition here that we got on the team, some people know how to handle animals. Some people don't, and some people think they know how to handle animals. And that's this lady right here. Seems to be some sort of, like, cat specialist. She has a booth where um, she's handling cats for people, and she is not picking up the energy of this cat at all. I, I let cats go. I pick them up. I, I test my limits, but I know when to back off. And uh, to yeah, your, yeah, like your to cat trusts you because you'd be picking up by the scruff and like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right the, yeah just like how his mother would pick, uh, how the mother would pick yeah. her up. Yeah, like, cause, cause that cat, she'd be trying to do too much. Yeah. Stop. So she did when yeah. I was in the Come on. I, I, this is my house. 
Why you don't try to make me be quiet? What has what we call a locket on the chest? Oh, no, no, we're going to... Uh-uh. Owner. Owner. Bitch. Oh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I need the owner now. <laughs> I need the owner now. She never been. Look, look at that. Look at that cat in the background watching. He watched that whole shit. You see him? You see the <laughs> Yo, you know what's so crazy? That that white lady never been. That white lady right there never been smacked by black pussy before. <laughs> that black pussy smacked shit out of her. Like, bitch. Pow! All right? That's what Rosa Parks. <laughs> Black History Month. Mm -hmm. I told y'all we're well, gonna find some way somehow to incorporate Black History Month into this episode, and, and th there it is: Black History, Black Pussy intruding. <laughs> Have you ever been? <laughs> Have you ever been swallowed? Have you ever been swallowed? Have you ever been swallowed? <laughs> I'm sorry, we're gonna leave that on the last episode, <laughs> but that was just crazy. Being that bitch got swallowed <laughs> by that black cat. Oh shit, that's all I got with you. Actually, you know, what I wanted to, to bring up that um, everyone's been complimenting our uh, the the new setup that we have. You know, we're facing a just a different way in the room right now. It probably looks a lot different watching on the the episode, but they love the background of Michael Che, you and. Uh, and Corey, a lot of people are like, "Man, it was so nice of them to give that give that to Jimmy." And I, <laughs> I don't want to spoil that for anybody. But I, I don't give it. a fuck. I stole it. I took it. I didn't steal it. I took it. What the fuck was they gonna do with it? Okay. And these were shows that I was on, and I was really proud to be on because I bodied karate does show. Okay, body <laughs> karate the show. Yes, baby. So I took those, and that's that. That's the night that that one right there. The only time I ever headlines Caroline's. No radio. Yeah, Greg Charles. <laughs> you you a weirdo, dog. But you my nigga. But you're a weirdo. Okay. No help. But from the streets, man. From the streets, the motherfuckers that fuck with me, man. We sold that bitch out. I'm glad that, yeah, Michael Che, he, he, he made the wall. That nigga, he did some great shit for me, doc. That nigga did some dope shit for me that he didn't have to do. That nigga wrote a part for me. And his sketch show on HBO. And he didn't just put me in it. Okay. That nigga thumbnailed me on the episode, man. When you go to fucking Max and look up the Michael Chase show season two, I think it's episode two. You see me. And let me tell you something. There's a way more famous nigga than, 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 than <laughs> me that, that's in that sketch. I didn't know who the nigga was when I first met him. But the moment this nigga was on my radar, the moment I did that sketch with that motherfucker, bro, he was everywhere. I, commercials, movies, everywhere, dog. So... Michael J, that motherfucker made, he made that wall. And Corey Holcomb, 5150, all motherfucking day. That's my motherfucking hero, bro. He was fucking Patrice O'Neill's hero. This nigga's my hero for real, bro. And he's a real big brother. I think he's a real big brother, nigga. Like, 
he, 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 Corey Holcomb is not for everyone, okay? If you are deceitful, envious, scheming, intruding, trying to figure out how you're going to scam and get over on this nigga, he's not for you. If you're a fake motherfucker, he, he's not for you. If you're genuine with genuine intentions, it's going to take a minute to get through that maze to his heart, dog. He's just not that. But overall, he's just a monster on that stage. Nobody fucking with him. And I, it's so crazy that the game is designed the way it is. But, you know, once again, shout out to Cat Williams for motherfucking help, you know, scope. Sure, the landscaping of comedy right now, cause shit is shifting. And 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 the real and the real let me tell you something, man. It's inevitable they really about to start to get the light that they deserve, dog. So we was rare endangered species during endangered and dangerous times. And we still are. Because these other niggas know their their time their time is up. Their time is up, man. There's real funny niggas in New York City that is that did not really get the real break that they were supposed to in Hollywood. Real funny motherfuckers in New York. I, you know, and I, I don't know what to say. I, you know, like, I don't know what to say. Like, I just pray that these motherfuckers get their light. I pray that they get their light. They're just, and that's on God, man. But. Corey Holcomb and Michael Che, they made my wall, man, because they're forever dope in my mind. I'm not saying I got I don't got dope other um, you know, family and members in in this misfit university of comics that I'm 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 a part of, you know. You know, I I love me some Sherrod Smalls, you know. Um you know, I I love me some Tiffany. Well, we're about to get into that. We done with G Money Talk? We are. I will just say that I was with you two out of those three times, not the time you sold out Caroline's for your own headlining, but for Michael Che and Corey Holcomb. And both times we were about to leave, we left. You're like, you know what? Or you were like, let me go get paid real quick. I'm going to say goodbye, and then we'll head out. I was like, all right, cool. I'll wait here. You're gone 10 or 15 minutes, and then you come speed walking out. I'm like, what does he have in his head? Let's go. Let's go. All right, we're going. Let's go. That was from my perspective both times. Oh. Caroline's is closed now, so fuck it. What they would have been sitting in a basement somewhere, or some you know someone's fucking garage, or sold at auction for too much money. So I we got him. You deserved him too. I was Michael Che night especially, man. That was fucking. Yo, niggas, I, 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 it'd be so funny how niggas try to downplay like I'm not dope on stage and shit like that. Like it is what it is, you know. What every uh, the the. If you are what you say you are, a superstar, then have no fear. The crowd is here. I I already know. My time coming. My time coming. All right. I want to talk about something. All right. Club Shay Shay. 
Club Shay Shay has gone too far, man. Mm. You know, it's like everybody, everybody want to come on that show after Cat Williams and grieve, present their grievance to the world. You know, talking crazy, you know, just because Aunt Shay Shay <laughs> done turned Club Shay Shay. And I want y'all to hear me when I say this shit. Aunt Shay Shay done turned Club Shay Shay into the motherfucking view. This is just a bunch of motherfucking grievances, bunch of mother. It, it, it's gossip. It, it's all. It's. It's really. It's whack. And you know what's like really whack about it the most is that if it was he's not doing this with NFL players, which is like his realm. He's having comics come over and just air out their dirty That's shit. He's I not was... even doing it with rappers or anything. Cat Williams came on, so now it's open forum for them to just air that shit out. If an NFL player came on there, he'd check them with that. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But mm -hmm. that's not... He's just letting but them... But these niggas, like, these niggas, they don't give a fuck. Nigga, I know what this comedy game is. To the, to the regular... I've been telling... Niggas is like, yo, I didn't know it was like that, Jim. Comedy crazy. I've been telling motherfuckers, comedy is like the motherfucking rap game, nigga. This shit is real, bro. This shit ain't no motherfucking ah, nigga. It, it's it's sex, guns, and laughter, and rock and roll, bro, and hip hop. This shit is litty for real, y'all. Y'all think it's because we're comics and it's hey, you guys make us ah. I remember one night. A nigga met me and G Money at a comedy club. I believe it was Broadway Comedy Club, okay? This nigga, I, you know, I, I go up there. It's a room full of white folks. You know, I put my charm on. I do my thing with my jokes. You know, I got to put the charm in those jokes, bro. And I body. At the end of the motherfucking show, G Money and I about to go, and this nigga's like, "Yo, wow, that was, I was actually rhyming right there. I didn't even <laughs> realize it." But this nigga was like, "Hey, yo, so what are you guys about to do?" I was like, "We about to head to the hut." You know what I mean? He's like, "Yeah, can I roll?" Yes, nigga, you can. You want to see what's really up? <laughs> G Money was not a happy camper. This nigga had on his John Rambo First Blood Army jacket, okay? But he had a scarf on. So an army jacket and a scarf is not, you're not thugging it all the way out, nigga. Nah, <laughs> something else is going on. So G Money was like, uh, he already got in the car and sat behind G Buddy. <laughs> I mean, what? Well, 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 oh, think about it. Because while this guy is, we're both sitting in the car and he's asking us, sitting out of the car. So while he's asking us, yo, I just want to see what your life is about. I want to roll with you. He's talking to Jimmy and I'm sitting in the driver's seat looking at Jimmy like, don't say yes to this fucking guy. <laughs> Please put the phone. <laughs> yeah, man, come on here. <laughs> Continue, sorry. Hey, yo. But this nigga thought it was a game. I be trying to tell these niggas I'm in the streets for real. I'm 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 I, I'm, I need to do better, okay? But took the nigga to the hood and we went to the motherfucking gambling uh house. You know what I mean? And it was turned up in that bitch, dog. That nigga stayed for like 10 minutes. It's like, yo, man, I gotta go downtown and meet some friends. <laughs> I 
I just dapped the nigga up. I nigga didn't even let the blunt go around again to him, yo. He just got the one rounder. You know what I mean? Like, man, listen, bruh. Man, listen, dog. I be trying to tell you, man, like this comedy game really like the rap game. You niggas running around with shooters. Niggas is, uh, you know, niggas trying to big, play big bank, take little bank. Um, niggas is fucking other niggas' bitches. M- motherfuckers is talking about it on stage and on their podcasts, on their platforms. However, whatever, you know, like, niggas is stabbing. Niggas is fighting. All, all kind of shit, man. Niggas is getting niggas shot at. Niggas is shooting at niggas. Comedy is real, bro. Y'all niggas don't see all this shit. Y'all don't get, y'all aren't privy to this. Okay? Like, y'all get, y'all get some TMZ snippet shit of this. But, I'm gonna say this, man. On Shay Shay, you bugging, bro, turning Club Shay Shay into the view. You, you, you exploiting comics and, you know, I, Listen, I don't like what you're doing to our culture, bro. With those weak setup questions of motherfuckers send niggas into the motherfucking flames to talk they shit. And then, and you 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 incur- Yo, bro, you 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 Rudy from motherfucking Fat Albert, dog, without the motherfucking shit over his head. You the worst, bro. How you gonna motherfucking be a vulture culture in our culture within the culture? You know you wrong, bro. But I know where those tendencies coming from. You cackin' up in the, with this woman, man. See, I'm normally she would have been a bitch. But I just praised this woman because I just saw precious. I just saw Precious um, last year for the first time ever. And I, and I posted it on my social media. I, she, I understand why she went to war with these folks, right? I understand. But <sighs> you, 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 you use this platform to try to take down good motherfuckers in the community to try to uplift your husband, your pimp. Man, listen, ma, like, I don't know you and I don't know Sydney, but I know what you, I know you hurt. And you, 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 you bleeding all over the place, ma. You're bleeding all over the place, love. I can't call you a bitch because I understand your frustration and I understand your receipts, right? I want the people to listen to this just so that they can recap and catch up, and then I'm going to come back to you, Mo. Press play, bro. I remember our beautiful sister Tiffany Haddish. Mm Mm-hmm. Did an interview with GQ Mm -hmm. magazine. And this, in my humble opinion, is weird. Stop, You heard that whole shit? Mm Mm-hmm. What you mm-hmm for? Aunt Shay Shay? Let that woman say what she's saying, man. She don't need you to instigate and, and come on, bro. Press play, man. Keep throwing each other under the bus. Mm-hmm. You're doing an interview with GQ Man. Stop. We keep throwing each other under the bus. So... Two wrongs make it right and you perpetuate the motherfucking situation. Shorty wild. Yo, she dangerous. She dangerous, man. She's a dangerous woman. Although she was wronged, she's dangerous. She's she reminds me of like Cecily from motherfucking Games of Thrones. Press play. And I, I'm assuming the journalist was a white person. Mm-hmm. 
And the conversation turned to Monique. And she said, well, I don't do business like Monique do business, and I'm glad I don't have that husband of hers. Tiffany responded in GQ by saying, my business runs different than her business. I don't live her life. I don't have that husband of hers. But she don't know your husband. And when I saw that, it's like, Tiffany, if you had a husband like mine, you may not have two DUIs. Mm. If you had a husband like mine, you may not be caught up in what looks like you could have been grooming a child. Mm -hmm. And I say all of that with no judgment. Hey, yo, but stop, when you speak stop. See how this bitch talking? Now she a bitch. Just because you speak softly and you try to come across elegantly doesn't mean it's classy, ma. Yeah, man. She's a little sister. You a grown-ass woman. You and Sydney. And you wild too, Mo. You wild too. You, yo, come on, Mo. You, your, your, your avatar for the, 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 the internet and for, for the work. Your avatar is crazy. But who you really are? Come on, yo. Come on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm heavy and be more. I, I, I'm. Yo, Mo, stop, Sydney. I can't. I, yo, I'm not saying that Tiffany wasn't wrong for mentioning y'all, or, or she could have hit a no comment, but the tone. You can't get the tone of. You can't get the tone of text. However, that reporter, you just said it. It could have been a white reporter. So you know they're gonna try to. You already know what that is. You know, you know a lot of undertone shit about the game. But you want niggas to be held accountable for other niggas' shit. That lady brought that shit up. That lady wrote that shit how she wanted to write it. Did you hear Tiffany say that? I, did you hear Tiffany vocally say that? No. They take shit and take it out of contents and all of that, Mo. You know that. But you going to take, you understand this industry. But you're going to take that and you're going to turn that to be weaponized, to utilize the weaponize it against Tiff or people that wronged you or, or you may have felt that was wrong, that wronged you. And yo, Ma, let me, let me say something. I'm glad you and Sydney is out here. Y'all loyal to each other. Y'all got your skeletons and y'all you're staying, you're staying loyal to your shit. All that talking that shit about her man and she if she had Sydney, man, stop. Stop. You got Sydney because you can control him. You got Sydney because he tolerates you. You can't find another nigga that's going to deal with this shit. You're not. No, 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 gummy bear. You're not. What's scary about you, Mo, is what's scary about you is you know the game. And you will try to motherfucking utilize people not being able to motherfucking move around the game, although they mean well towards you and for you, you would fucking you would throw them under the bus like they really wronged you. Like that shit with Kevin Hart. 
Like that shit with Kevin Hart. Yo, yo, Mo, you know Kev reached out to you to give you and your family bread. You know that boy did that shit out. That's who he is. It's it's in it's in his DNA to help. It's in his DNA to want to protect those that's being wronged. All I'm saying to you, that was wrong of you to do that to Kevin because of Dave Becky. When Kevin told you he would do the EP thing with you, he meant that. From the bottom of his heart. He wanted you to win. And you know what's crazy? Even after you threw him under the bus, he still wants you to win. How about that? How about that you know that I know that's a real conversation that transpired in? How about that you know that that brother still loved you and he still embraces you? But that was nasty for you to throw him under the bus for Dave Becky's behavior? Monique, Kevin is a real Hollywood star. He's a real Hollywood star. He's not He's not a comic. He's a comic, but he's a Hollywood star. You're not that. But can I be honest with you? You're a fucking star, man. You're a fucking star. And you shine so fucking bright. Let me tell you something. Instead of you going and bleeding all over the place, why don't you stay the fuck still and be a star, man? Niggas done leaked the Tyler Perry motherfucking art. We believed y'all. We never not believed y'all. We know the whole behavior Tyler and Oprah's on. And this is why I'm telling you most stay still. God sat you down for a reason, baby. God sat you down for a reason. Everyone's going to see your light despite the clouds, the dark, big clouds that's fucking blocking you. The Oprah's, the Tyler's. But whoever else is, Mo, most importantly, you. You're blocking you. I'm telling you right now, the clouds are going to go away. They have no choice. Look what's happening with Oprah right now. Taraji P. Henson. She's clearing that cloud out of your motherfucking way. Tyler Perry? What? Come on, dude. Really? He's, he's going to go out. Stay still. Let those clouds go. Stop fucking talking about them to keep them around. Let them go. Y'all don't have to worry. These aren't the only gatekeepers. We got dope motherfuckers like Crazy Ass 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson, doc. That's opening up doors for motherfuckers. Yeah. But what you did to Kevin Hart, Mo, you need to reach out to Kevin and you need to apologize to that brother for using on Shay Shay's platform to motherfucking do that to that boy, knowing that was Dave Becky. Knowing it was those, those those people that blocked that. 
Kevin wanted it. Kevin wouldn't have said it. I know that nigga, nigga. Kevin Hart took care of me the whole tab for me when I was up north, when I was locked away. Kevin Hart took care of my whole tab. He didn't have to. Mo, you you doing you doing the wrong motherfuckers dirty in Hollywood. If you gonna keep the charge, keep the charge on those motherfuckers, man. We all fall short, man. We all God's children. All that the way you talk, Mo, and uh, how you oh my babies and all I, yo ma, I see through all that shit. I see through all that shit. I let you rock, though. I know what an avatar is. That's why I don't say shit. But when you start talking about motherfuckers that I love and that I really know, honestly, that's good for the game, then you, you try to throw the slick shit in with the area spares, um, um, with the uh, pedophile little shit. Like, yo, Tiffany was hired motherfucking help. Okay, just in case you niggas don't motherfucking understand, she was hired by Area Spears Production Company. He said that was they were going to use the sketch for motherfucking Mad TV or SNL or some festival, some shit like that. The mother was on the set with the kids. I'm not even supposed to be telling niggas this shit. Stop alluding and talking about shit you motherfuckers don't know. That was real nasty of you, Mo. Neek. With the hyphen. That was nasty of you. You know that reporter did that shit with Tiffany too, man. I'm going to say this to the comics. Stop going on the motherfucking view, a.k.a. Club Shay Shay, to help destroy the realm. You motherfuckers has got to protect the realm, man. All we got is us. There are going to have to be some pillars that's at the fucking corners of the realm to make sure that niggas is in check inside the realm. Yeah, we're going to need that. But overall, we can't let outsiders come in and motherfucking... Come on, man. That niggas do it all across the board with motherfucking um, club promoters, show promoters. Oh, oh like... Y'all niggas is crazy out here, Doc. Y'all niggas is crazy out here. Nigga Kevin Hart's a good dude. He's a Hollywood star. He can't be the same way that he used to be with niggas that how he was with niggas, man. It's classism. You want to be able to hang out with the nigga on the regular, on the regular? Step your game up. I'm not mad at the nigga, dog. I'm happy. Shit, nigga, I'm happy. I still got the nigga number. <laughs> I'm glad niggas like motherfucking Terry still fuck with me, dog. I'm glad niggas like motherfucking Wayne fuck with me, dog. Harry's a little, I don't know. He be in and out. I don't know. I don't know, man. He be acting weird with me. I'm glad, I'm glad a nigga like John still fuck with me, B. You know, like, that's a good dude. And he did, he did great by his camp, by the niggas that was in his world, bro. Come on, Mo. Come on, Mo. Don't not to Kevin. Not to Kevin. And that's your little sister, dog. You know better. You're supposed to call your little sister directly. If you got a grievance, you need to call her and, and, and fix it with her. Don't do that to her in the world and throwing the DUIs out there if she had a husband like Sydney and all. Stop, man. 
your husband is fucking other bitches too. Out of here with that, man. He's a man. <laughs> you, you, I, I, what, what I'm starting to see on on Shay Shay show, man, is a uh, a lot of delusional motherfuckers up there talking talk. But guess what, man? I don't give a fuck. Live inside your matrix, but stop. Stop motherfucking with the culture. Protect the motherfucking realm. They're G Money, man. If they wanted to communicate, interact with the show in any way, form, or fashion, how could they do it? Well, they get clips of the show. They can follow us on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Fire on the Hole and Why. You get a video version of the show, more clips of the show uh, on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube. You get the full video version of the show a week early and all sorts of bonus content at patreon.com slash fire on the hole. And if you want to send us some artwork, some dope shit, that's P.O. Box 3553, New York, New York, 10027. P.O. Box 3553, New York, New York, 10027. And y'all niggas know how to get at me, man. I'm 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 st- I'm regular, man. Nine one seven seven nine two one five nine three. I'm regular with it. And Mo, you are in fucking pillar. I, I I you are an iconic pillar in our community. Rise up to the motherfucking occasion. Take the challenge on to be great. Keep all that shit beneath you because that's what it is, beneath you. I, we got to do better as a people. Yo, Shannon Sharp, I'm the, I'm, Denver Broncos is my motherfucking, my, yo, Denver Broncos I've been through a lot with y'all, dog. Okay. I was, I was, I, I came there with John, left Stanford. I was there. I went through a lot. I was so happy when you came. Pause. Yeah, that was weird. I had to pause. Um, yeah, just because of all, all the shit that you're in the middle of. I got anything that's fraudulent. I gotta pause myself, and I don't even play pause. But you, brother, we gonna need some. We gonna need a couple of things from you from the community. Shannon Sharp, we're gonna need you to stop wearing those aggressive, skinny sweatsuits. Okay, I I didn't even know they made skinny sweatsuits. I thought they was only skinny jeans. But if you those skinny sweatsuits. We're going to need you in the community to stop wearing those shits, all right? I don't know what you up to with that. Uh, nah, stop, bruh, okay? We already know who your stylist is. Stop. Another thing we're going to need you to stop doing, stop picking on the comics. Stop bringing us up there to basically DJ Vlad us. We go, uh, and I'm gonna leave it at that, man. I, 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 yo, Randy Caruso, you are great. You are great, brother. <laughs> yeah, doc. You are great. Know that. Fucking songs is hit songs that I wrote, doc. I love y'all, man. I love y'all. Thanks for fucking with us for another week. And um, hold on. We out. Look, I hate to do it, but I will do it. I would give myself an A plus. Is that enough? Can I go higher than that?